If you haven't noticed on Twitter, it's hump day. It's one of those days of the week where a lot of people say the same thing, and hey, happy hump day. I'm Dave Morris. Thanks for clicking on the play here on NewsOK.com. Some of the stories we'll talk about today, the Randy Terrell trial continues today. It's interesting stuff. In a downtown neighborhood complaining of loud noises coming from an area business, something that's new to me. I hadn't heard that before. Here to tell us about these stories, Nick Tragagas from the Oklahoma's newsroom. Nick, we're sitting in new chairs, and just it's a whole new world, isn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. just amazing, yeah. the height difference. And happy hump day to you, too. All right, well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Yeah. You know, the Randy Terrell trial is day three, and today Governor Brad Henry testified, and you don't have a former governor on uh, well, in the courtroom that often. Yeah, we were, we were talking about this. Um, and when you look at the, what the possible punishment could be if Randy Terrell is found guilty, I mean, you know, you know a two-year uh, jail sentence is not excessive, though. You you, know, you're right. Neither one of us want to go there for two years. Right. Uh, and a $5,000 fine is not an outrageous fine, you, you know, uh, for some people. Um, but what is really notable, notable about this trial is that it is sort of a, um, a star-studded lineup, a who's mm -hmm. who, if you will, of political figures in the state. And of course, the big news uh, today was former Governor Brad Henry testifying in the case. Um, they asked him uh, about a law that he vetoed. Um, and what's significant is that this law would have contained the creation of this position that it is alleged that Randy Terrell was trying to create At for the medical examiner's office. That's right, for Senator Debbie Lefwich. Um, Governor Henry uh, testified that he vetoed the bill primarily because of that position that had been created at the examiner's office. So uh, Nolan is there in the court, as he has been all week, and he'll have the full rundown on the uh, former governor's testimony. And uh, Representative Mike Christian also had testimony today. Again, more coverage from the Oklahomans, Nolan Clay. And getting back to uh, the fact this is day three, earlier, I believe day one on Monday during uh, when they were seating the uh, prospective jurors, not everybody had heard of former Governor Brad Henry. At least three prospective jurors. Uh, had in fact not heard of the governor. Uh, I don't know if any of those actually made the final right. jury. I'm sure they know who he is now though. Right, so. absolutely. It's just a story that uh, continues to develop and we will have coverage of it. All right, moving on to another story. Downtown neighborhoods uh, are complaining of loud noises coming from an area business. Uh, it's a story our William Crum is working on and this is interesting. I had never actually heard of this, but apparently it's been ongoing for a little while. This is, this is definitely one of those um, off the beaten path types of stories. Uh, there's a neighborhood called the Lower JFK neighborhood. It's down uh, near the Oklahoma River and uh, Reno Avenue in the downtown area. Um, there is a uh, metal recycling plant there and one of the things they do is they crush old cars and their machinery there. Well some neighbors are complaining and alleging that perhaps they're crushing the cars with gas uh, tanks still intact and gasoline in the car and stuff which you're not supposed to do. The result, the neighbors say, are these loud explosions, these huge booms during the middle of the day that, that literally have neighbors rushing out of the house to, to look around and Say, figure out what's, what's going, going on. on. Um, the business says that, you know, we're not doing anything wrong. Um, there may be some glass bottles or something that get caught in the compactors and that's what causes the explosion. Well, the neighbors aren't buying that. They've taken their complaints to the city council. Now the city council is looking at it. So this is a good example of one of those deals where uh, if you have an issue in your neighborhood, you know, Take it to the top, take it to your city government. And that's what some residents are doing. Just raise some awareness in the city I'm seeing here is saying that the recycler is properly, properly licensed. Mm -hmm. uh, one other story, researchers at OU Health Sciences Center have announced a development in the fight against pancreatic cancer. That seems like a pretty good thing. Yeah, this was big news today. Um, pancreatic cancer, one of the most uh, stubborn, hard to cure, um, hard to survive types of cancer that you can get. I think there's a statistic that uh, within five years of being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, only 5% of those who have received treatment will actually still be alive. Wow. Uh, very difficult to treat. What they announced today was they have located a protein uh, related to the cancer that they feel could be a real linchpin in finding a way to better treat pancreatic cancer. Um, this fine that they have now clears them to go ahead with some further clinical research, but uh, the doctors down there at the Health Sciences Center um, said it's a very positive step and they're very optimistic about the uh, applications. Wow, some good news there. That's uh, being written by our Silas Allen. Hey, coming up on the Press Row tomorrow, our Jenny Carlson and Barry Trammell will take a look at Josh Heupel's performance at, as OU's offensive coordinator, and of course he's taking some heat these days. Who will start for the Cowboys on Saturday and the future of sudden Sam Bradford in the NFL? 
That'll do it for this edition of The Play. Nick, thanks for your time today. Appreciate sure. it. These stories and more can be found in upcoming editions of The Oklahoman and on our website at newsok.com. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.